Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for, for joining us. A number of, of familiar names and, and grantees on the line, so thank you all for, for joining today. Uh, today's webinar is on project setup in the Econ Planning Suite. Uh, and this webinar is being presented by uh, John Coons from the Cloudburst Group. John has been uh, a lead technical assistance provider on the Econ Planning Suite. John, do you want to say hello? Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning to some of you who are out west. Uh, and myself, my name is Chris Andrews, also with the Cloudburst Group. Uh, and like John, I've been working uh, within the Econ Planning Suite now for, for six or seven years. Uh, and we're also joined by Beth Hendricks from the Office of Block Grant Assistance at HUD Headquarters. Beth, would you like to say hello? Hi, everyone. This is Beth Hendricks from the Office of Block Grant Assistance. Um, before we get started in the webinar today, I wanted to make sure we got some news out to those who may not have heard yet. Uh, HUD has issued a waiver on the 30-day citizen participation public comment period for both states and local jurisdictions. This is because, as you know, allocations have not yet come out yet and the delay in having the budget passed this year. The waiver takes the 30-day public comment period down to a minimum of a 14-day public comment period. This will help you be able to get your plans in on time and prior to the August 16th deadline that is statutory. If you want to take advantage of that public comment waiver that we've offered, you're still going to need to make sure that you provide that citizen public comment period and document that you did so in your FY17 plan submission, that it took place for a minimum of 14 days. Also, you're going to want to document in your files the conditions that caused you to have to need to utilize the waiver. If questions about this waiver, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about it during the webinar today, but please reach out to your field office representative. In addition to that, a copy of the waiver and the information I just discussed came out in the CDBG program update that it went out uh, late last week and again early this week. If you don't receive the update for some reason, please reach out to your field office rep. They will be able to send it on to you as well. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Cloudverse folks to start our webinar. Great. Thank you, Beth. And, and again, if anyone does have any questions on that, that waiver as you're working on your 2017 action plan, uh, please connect either with your field office rep or, or send in and ask a question and we can connect you with that document. Uh, but for today's session, we will be talking about project setup in the Ecom planning suite. And before we do, I uh, just would like to go over a few logistics and housekeeping items. Uh, today's webinar is, will be 90 minutes long uh, because we have right around 300 folks on the line. All lines will be muted uh, and you can send questions or, or technical issues or anything that you need uh, through the question functionality in the GoToWebinar uh, pane. John, Beth, and I will be stopping throughout the session today to answer questions that you type in. Uh, we'll try to answer all of the questions. It looks like a number of questions have already come in, which is, is great to see and glad to see that so many of you have questions on, on project setup and project design. If we're not able to answer your question, please submit that through the HUD Ask a Question desk and we will make sure that we get an answer to you as soon as we can. Uh, but we'll try to answer as many questions as we can today. Before turning over to, to John to start the session, uh, I just wanted to go over what our goals are for today's webinar. Uh, number one is making sure all of you know how to correctly create or add IDIS projects to the AP35 screen of the annual action plan. And, and we'll be talking through the instructions for both entitlement communities and state grantees. We also want to, to help you learn how to properly set up your projects 
in the annual action plan and make sure that you're aligning your IDIS activity accomplishment data with the goals in your strategic and your annual action plan. Uh, and that becomes so important as it becomes time for your paper to make sure that all of that data is, is set up properly. And, and finally, and, and most importantly, we really want to answer your questions. Please type in your questions as they come up. If you have a question on setting up a certain type of project or how to operate a project within the Econ Planning Suite or how it relates to IDIS, please send in those questions and we'll try to, uh, try to answer as many questions as we can. And so with that, John, I will turn it over to you to start off the session. Well, thank you, Chris. Um, so I think what we'll do today, uh, as, as we often do, is start with a, a little poll so we can get a better sense on um, just who is out there. And so I've just launched a poll. You should see it on your screen, and, and many of you have done this before. Uh, just simply click the radio button and submit the uh, the response that applies back to you. So we're just looking, what's your experience in the econ planning suite first? So are you a newbie, like pretty much brand new to this, uh, have a little experience but, but under a year, more than a year, or or you're, you know, just beyond that, you're a real professional. You're, you're you know, James LeBron or something like that. So go ahead and respond. Um, looks like we've gotten quite a few responses in, so I'm going to close it. And let's see our responses. So, oh, almost a quarter of you consider yourselves newbies, so we'll be sure we, we start from, you know, include sort of the basics in here. Um, another 20% or so, under less than a, or really less than a year. Um, 47, almost half are more than a year, but don't quite consider your pros, and 9% uh, are real pros. So you're looking for the, you know, one or two little answers that maybe you may be seeking. So we'll try to uh, to cover that. So I'm going to do um, one more poll to start out. Um, and this is really just getting a sense on your experience in IDIS. So not just the econ planning suite. Some of you may have been doing IDS for years, but turned over into IDIS, or might be the opposite. So again, are you a, a newbie? Uh, consider yourself to be one. Uh, a little more than a newbie, but less than a year. One to three years, more than three years, or you're just the, the IDS pro. You've been around and you you've got it all down. And uh, you know, just give it another couple seconds. Looks like we have most responses in. And let me uh, share the results. So um, a little less, most of you have some IDX experience. Only 15% consider yourself newbies, another 13% less than a year. Um, a little over a quarter of you are in the one to three year range. A third of you are more than three years, but not quite a pro, or at least you can, don't consider yourself a pro. And then 13% uh, are, are IDS pros, so that's great. So we have a, a broad range of, uh, of options here. So let me close this down. All right. So great. So we'll start on the, the first. So um, because, you know, clearly looking at the polls, we do have a range of experience among today's participants, we do want to first make sure we're clear about a couple of keywords for a session. Uh, so the projects and activities are sometimes used interchangeably with some HUD programs. They'll stay consistent with their very specific meanings as they apply to IDIS and the Econ Planning Suite. So in other words, we're going to go into a IDIS speak now. Projects. So IDS projects generally correspond to the grantees consolidated plan and act, annual action plan projects. Each IDS project is set up under a specific plan year. And these projects are high level descriptions of what the grantee intends to accomplish over the next year. Grantees enter information about each project, such as name, description, estimated budget, and expected accomplishments. 
Projects also serve as a chief mechanism for organizing and tracking related activities in IDIS. So now let's turn to activities. And again, uh, bear with me. Many of you are familiar with this, but I think it's just important that we're all together and, and there are a good amount of folks that are new to the system. So activities. Each activity in IDIS is set up under one of the projects in an action plan. It's at the activity level that grantees supply HUD with details about the work they will carry out to meet the project goals. Information entered at the setup includes the activity name, location, proposed accomplishment, and program-specific data. Uh, grantees will also disperse funds against the activities in IDIS and report actual accomplishments as work is completed within the activities. So let's look at an example just to uh, show what this might look like. So here, here's a little diagram, and, and there really is a distinct relationship between projects and activities. This is an example of grantee that broadly defines the project, in this case simply as public facilities under the CDB3 program for the 2017 program year. The project narrative can be used to more fully describe the public facilities work that will be undertaken. Regardless of how many projects are defined, the activities which will be entered into IDIS after the annual action plan is, has been submitted and the program year is underway will need to be specific enough to meet their respective CPD program requirements. Thus, the activities in the CDBG example here are site-specific and clearly be identified as an eligible activity and so forth. They can be entered as the activity is ready to commence. Notice that the activity numbers are not necessarily concurrent, but they are all associated with the same 2017 project. So the, the, the activity numbers reflect at the time in which they are entered into the system. And in this case, again, the project serves as a means to organize these activities, and grantees can choose to organize their CDBG or home data in a way that helps track and communicate their plans, finances, and accomplishments. So let's look at a, another sample. Uh, so while the broadly defined projects will work well for uh, many grantees, there are some that prefer to more narrowly define their projects. In this example, the grantee has chosen to set up three narrowly defined projects in the econ planning suite each of which covers the same narrow scope as its corresponding activity. So in this case, we look at, they set up a, a project which they defined as a Liberty Rec Center expansion and uh, when it came to the activity, they set up a single activity under the same project for the Liberty Rec Center expansion and then they created a separate project for senior center improvements and so forth. So it's rather than grouping them and organizing them by one broader category, they, they went with a one-to-one. -one. Uh, relationship. So let's just talk a moment about defining the, uh, the project in IDIS. Yes. And, and really, so a key point is that grantees do have discretion to define their projects more broadly. Um, they may want to give some thought on how, you, how to organize and define your projects in, or at least CDBG and home. We'll talk about, uh, in, in fact, we do want to note that um, each CPD program has some specific protocols for setting up projects and activities, and each information in this can be found in their uh, respective IDS guidance documents on the HUD exchange. So specifically, um, ESG uh, grantees need to set up one project uh, each year for the entire grant amount, and then uh, they'll set up an activity under the project for each eligible activity category undertaken. And somewhat similarly, HOPWA will set up one project for the grantee and one project for each sponsor funded for that program year. So there are some, some differences and good documentation exists in the IDS manuals on the HUD exchange for some of those program specific requirements. All right. Now let's move a little deeper in how projects work within the econ planning suite. 
So within the econ planning suite, projects act as a bridge, linking activities, accomplishments in IDIS to the strategic and annual goals identified in the consolidated plan and annual action plan in the econ planning suite. The projects serve as the integral role for aligning data among all the different components, the consolidated plan, the action plan, IDIS activities, and the CAPER. And so now that we've covered a little bit of that, I'm going to turn this back over to Chris, who's going to talk a little bit about um, the goal outcome in indicators. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, John. And continuing just to make sure we're all on the same page of, of how projects fit into both the econ planning suite and into IDIS together, uh, we'll talk through how uh, the, the flow of, of data from your strategic plan all the way through the activities, and then talk about the role that projects play in that, uh, primarily in your reporting. Right. So you'll see here on the screen, uh, have a float or a, a diagram of a strategic plan for a five-year period, 2015 to 2019, uh, the five corresponding action plans, and we'll zero in on the second action plan for 2016. Within that action plan, that action plan has three goals, a goal of decent housing, a goal of public facilities, and a goal of, of neighborhood services. Uh, and we'll just focus on one goal to talk through on, on projects, uh, and that's the goal of decent housing. And so within that, there may be any number of projects, as, as John was describing, the definition and, and the structure of creating projects just a few minutes ago. The first project could be related to homeowner rehab, the second to rental rehab, and the third could be emergency repair. Uh, and within that rental rehab, you know, is where you would break down and have your specific activity. Uh, and those specific activities are, of course, where you're reporting on your accomplishment-related data. You know, really highlighting and bragging, telling this is what we did, this is what we accomplished uh, with our, our HUD resources. Uh, and that data you know, links back up through the project, uh, through the goal outcome indicators, and then to the goal and to the action plan and the strategic plan, and we'll show how all of that reports into the uh, the caper. I, so we'll start with the the process of aligning the the goal outcome indicators. So we were looking uh, earlier at a rental rehab project, and so we'll keep the focus on that that being a rental rehab project here. Uh, as we look at how goal outcome indicators are used within the econ planning suite and how they tie to projects and ultimately how t projects are tying those to action plans. So in the strategic plan goal, the strategic plan goal may be tied to, to rehabbing the rental housing stock. Uh, and in that strategic plan, indicate that the goal is to rehab 350 rental units. Now that's spread out over a five-year period. So in your annual plan, that would be the same goal of rehabbing your rental housing stock. That goal may, may just be 70 units for, for the year. And that then ties down to, to our project, in which the project, that goal outcome indicator, should also be matching the annual action plan as uh, of also being on rental units rehabbed, and here it's the same number, so it's just one project accomplishing uh, that goal. We talked about this in the action plan webinar, and I just want to reiterate it here as well. Uh, the importance of making sure, and this is something you need to do manually, but making sure that your goal outcome indicators from your strategic plan are the same as your action plan and are the same as your project. And that will make reporting in your caper so much easier. And so looking at this flow chart, we'll, we'll again just come back to, to this chart of aligning our goal outcome indicators. And now you know, at the top at the strategic plan is where we had our, our 350 units indicated that we would accomplish within, within that strategic plan goal. In our annual plan, in that goal number one, 
again indicated that that would be 70 units of rental rehab of uh, rental rehab uh, that we would complete during the year. And then that ties down to those three activities. And so those for those three activities, as long as they are linked to that project and are linked to uh, using the appropriate matrix code that lines up with the, the corresponding goal outcome indicator. And we can make sure to send out a, uh, a chart on that for you all uh, to be able to match up what your, your matrix codes are and how they line up with your outcome indicators. That will report all of that data for you into your caper. And so you see here, you know, we have our, our report that comes out of our caper, our accomplishment screen. And, and this is where we get so many questions of, of how to set up projects and, and how to enter content into the econ planning suite to make sure that this data is lining up correctly and and everything is populating correctly in the caper. And the trick is just making sure that your goal, your strategic plan goals, for using the same goal outcome in indicators are connected appropriately to your action plan goals, which are connected with one project. And then that project is associated with the corresponding activities, and those activities are using the, the matrix code that lines up with those goal outcome indicators. And and before pausing here, I know we've got a few questions that have, have come in just clarifying some of the content that John went over. I, I want to reiterate that your action plan is a plan. So in this example where the, the grantee had a goal of, of 70 rental units rehab and the actual value was only 67, we've had a number of questions come in where do you need to amend or revise your action plan so that your expected equals the actual? And unless there's another change that it needs to be addressed through that amendment or, or an amendment that, you know, a different change that could be the cause for that difference, you know, that is just your planning document. And if those actuals are a little bit below or a little bit over, you know, that's okay. And your caper is the time to report on that and to tell your story. That's a really good comment, Chris. The numbers don't have to actually add up. As you said before, it's a planning document. So you just need to be able to describe why you only were able to do 67 units versus the expected 70. And that narrative piece, it doesn't always have to match up because life happens and sometimes the project changes. But you, uh, at the end of the day, did what you told the public you were going to do, which is rehab rental units. I also want to add on one other piece here in that prior to creating your caper, it's really important that you go back to those projects and activities and make sure all of the accomplishment data is in there and verify it is in there correctly. The reason why is when a caper is created, it tells the system to pull all of that accomplishment data and attach it to the projects, activities, and goals that are were in the action plan and download that into the caper. If your information isn't up to date or all your accomplishment data isn't in IDIS prior to creating that caper, it will not download into a caper once it's set up. So the system knows to pull it all at the time of creation, but once a caper has been created, it can't pull new info into it. You'll have to reconcile that manually in the system. So save yourself some work. Do the work beforehand before you create the caper in the system. Great. Thank you, Beth. And John, just a couple of clarifying questions uh, came in on your overview of projects and activities. Um, can you provide any guidance on, on how to define a project in the econ planning suite to make sure that the field office and the community uh, has enough information about the plans? Oh, sure, that's a, a really good question. Um, and again, you know, different field offices may have slightly different takes on this, but but the important thing is, you know, you're you're looking this as a way to communicate uh, with both your your field office and your citizens. And so, if you are not going into say the detail that we looked at uh, of that one-to-one -one relationship where you're getting down to almost an activity level detail, um, you have the option that within 
each project in the um, action plan, with each, with each project of the AP35 screen, there are two narrative fields. So in the top, there's a description field that you can give an overview. But then near the bottom of the screen, uh, you'll find a narrative field called planned activity. And this is an area where you can go into a little bit of greater detail about the, um, the type of activities you're going to do. You know, certainly, you know, sometimes the field also wants to have a sense that you're doing eligible activities and so forth. So that's the, uh, a good way to use that space to provide information to your, your field office um, that does not require um, breaking down your projects into very finite uh, scopes. Uh, and John, that's a great setup and, and in a few minutes we will we'll demo you know, the process of creating a project and we can highlight those fields that, that John just mentioned. John, a, a grantee asked you just to, to clarify what you were saying about ESG projects and the requirements that are specific to ESG uh, project setup. Oh, sure. Yeah. And so that's really important for ESG grantees. So, so again, the um, ESG program is really thought through and, and they use IDIS in a slightly different way than some of the other programs. And so they have very specific requirements, and that is um, uh, that first you only set up one ESG project per federal fiscal year, uh, and you set it up for the entire grant amount. And then once you get going, you'll be setting up activities, and each activity corresponding corresponds to one of the, uh, I believe, six different activity categories, such as street outreach, shelter, homeless prevention, uh, leave rapid rehousing, data collection, and, and administration. So there's a little difference. And again, there's a great document. I believe it's called Using IDS Online for the Emergency Solutions Grant Program. And that can be found in the, uh, on the HUD exchange. Great. And, and we can make sure to, to send that out to everyone after today's session. Uh, John, one last clarifying question before we, we move on. Uh, can you please clarify, is a project in the action plan at the same as an activity in IDIS, or is there a difference between those two? And I can go back to the, the project and activity screen if that would be helpful. Yeah, that would, that would probably be very helpful. Um, and so, yeah, so, so I guess the first of the answer is no. <laughs> Um, you know, we really want to distinguish, um, again, using IDIS speak first, you know, the projects are what you have in your AP35 screen. Um, you have different options for how you define, how, how narrowly to define those. So they could be these broad categories like uh, public facilities or, or street programs, and then you put more specific, you know, detailed activities underneath those. So you really want to focus on projects on the AP35 screen, and then later on, once your project, your action plan is approved uh, and you're ready to move in, you'll be ready to set up the more detailed activities in IDIS. And so they'll be linked. The activities will be linked to your projects, but they are not the same thing. Great. Thank you, John, and I think uh, great questions, uh, and please continue to, to keep those questions coming in. Let's talk quickly on, on project setup and the process of creating a project, and then we'll be able to go into IDIS and, and demonstrate this process. And generally, every grantee is creating new projects for each program year. And there are exceptions that apply for, for multi-year projects. And we'll talk about multi-year projects a little bit later in, uh, in today's session and describing what, what necessarily is a multi-year project or multi-year funded project and, and how to set that up within the Econ Planning Suite and within IDIS. Uh, and you'll see when setting up your, your projects you have both your, your program, your project ID, and you also then have your, your corresponding IDIS ID. Uh, and that is 
is always associated with your projects. And there's two ways to, to set up a project. And, and we'll talk through both of these. The first is through the AP35 screen. Uh, and this is at the point of when you're actually creating your action plan, or if it's your, your year one, uh, if you're creating your consolidated plan, it would be embedded within the con plan template. Uh, but you do it from the AP35 screen. And, and when you create a project within the AP35 screen, when you're setting up a project there, uh, that will automatically link that project to your annual goals, your strategic plan goals, uh, and it will tie all of that data together in the caper. So where Beth and I were just discussing you know, the value and, and making sure that everything is connecting through your strategic plan, down to your action plan, down through your project, setting up your projects within the AP35 screen uh, helps in that process and, and makes it much easier to, to do so. Uh, the second option of setting up a project is is through the project tab in IDIS. And for state grantees, you may do this. My state grantees can also set up their projects within the AP35 screen. Uh, definitely benefits to that, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Um, but if during the course of the program year, if you're starting an amendment and you're not ready to create that amendment within the econ planning suite, uh, or if you, as a state grantee, you're setting up your project after submitting your action plan, you can do that by clicking on the project tab, creating that data. But then, and this is the important part, and this is, I think, where we get a lot of questions, is you need to, at some point during the program year, go back into the econ planning suite, back into your action plan, and make sure that project that you created up created from the projects tab, from the project screen in IDIS is linked and connected to your AP35 screen to make sure all of that data carries forward in your uh, caper and in all of your reporting. Chris, that's a really important comment. I just want to jump in real quick. Here's why. Uh, I talked before about when you create a caper, it tells IDIS, the system, to pull information into that caper. The same is true when you create your next action plan or that caper. If you didn't put that project to begin with in your action plan, when you generate that caper, the system doesn't know to pull that project into the caper from the action plan. Why? It wasn't there. It was only in IDIS. So it's real important that you go back, put it in your action plan if you started it in IDIS first um, to make sure that then that information go, flows directly into your CAPER and subsequent plans going forward. Absolutely. Great point. So just very quickly walking through, I uh, want to highlight a few things before we go into the demo, and we'll point these out in the demo. Uh, the state grantees, you, you are encouraged. You know, for state grantees, it will, will say optional on the AP35 screen. Uh, though, do recommend using the AP35 screen to create your projects for the exact reasons that Beth just described in, in setting up uh, your data so everything is flowing and tied together correctly. When you're creating your project in the AP35 screen, there are two different fields to enter the, the dollar value of that project, uh, the estimated amount and the expected resources. These two fields are actually what are tying together the econ planning suite and the, the financial side of IDIS. So the econ planning suite is this the lower table, the expected resources, and that's what's tying back to your annual resources screen and your strategic resources screen to make sure that your resources are fully allocated and, 
and if there's a difference, you may get a, a quality check error or warning. And then the estimated amount, right here at the top, it uh, includes all of the, the HUD programs. This is what will carry forward into your project setup in the rest of IDIS. And we'll go through and, and show that process. And also when setting up your project, and again, we'll point all of this out in IDIS, is you're able to select what are your annual goals that are supported. So here, uh, selecting one. And we do recommend, you're not required to, but we do recommend uh, that you select only one goal, and that will make that accomplishment reporting easier at the time of your caper, because the corresponding accomplishment data from those activities that come from that project can automatically be tied to that one goal. If you select multiple goals, IDIS doesn't want to double count your accomplishment data. And so therefore, it does not report those accomplishments with either goal. And you would need to manually do that and select which goal you know, to, to associate that data and then use the narrative to describe that, that it was also supporting a second goal or there was a second or third goal involved. And then again, the goal outcome indicators. This is something we've talked about a little bit and you want to make sure you're using the same goal outcome indicators with your strategic plan, your annual action plan, and your project. This is when, when I am working on an action plan or when I am working on a consolidated plan, this is the mantra that I work with, of just making sure that all of that data is lined up from your strategic plan all the way down to your projects. And that will make all of your reporting, all of your future action plans so much easier and it will really streamline that data and make your, your CAPER process a much smoother process. We're going to pause here and, and pull up IDIS and we'll do a quick demo. So just logging in. Chris, while you're logging in, I just want to reiterate, particularly for those of you who are IDIS pros or who've been doing this for quite some time and are used to the paper process versus the econ planning suite process. I know you're used to in your CAPER reporting how many houses you built or how many people you served by project or activity. The difference in the econ plan suite and the CAPER is it's pulling your accomplishment data based on the goal that you selected, not based on that project or activity. So if you remember the CRO5 screen, that goal screen in the CAPER, it's pulling all of the accomplishment data based on the goals that you selected. If you selected more than one goal, as Chris mentioned before, just a moment ago, the data doesn't know where to land. So that's when you'll have to go in and manually reconcile. If, however, you select only one goal per project, the system now knows where to assign that accomplishment data based on the goal, and it makes your life easier at CAPER time when it comes to time to reconcile. So it's kind of a different way of looking at accomplishment data than maybe you have in the past. It's not project driven tried, uh, tied, instead it is goal driven tied in the caper. Great point, Beth. So I am just gonna pull up IDIS here uh, and we're in the, the UAT region of IDIS. Uh, and let me, I've got the AP35 screen pulled up. Uh, but the, the first thing when setting up a, a goal is to make sure that you're adding, oops, it looks like here, let me just pause here. Not the, the wrong version. Uh, is to make sure that you have your, your corresponding uh, strategic plan goals. And we'll start that here in the con plan. And so beginning to make sure that you do have your strategic plan goals. And you'll see here, we have our, all of our goals. And so from here, you know, we'll begin by making a 
action plan, we'll copy it off of this consolidated plan. So I just want to make that copy. Again, always helpful to, to double check this. Confirm the, the beginning year and the version, so 2013. I'm just going to go ahead and create that copy, 2013, 2013, and we're just going to call it 2017. We'll use today's date. And click copy. And now we have this version that we just created. We can go through and now you see that we have all of our goals that are here. And one of the things, and we are going to talk about this in a little bit, but I'm going to highlight it right here for you all in IDIS, is when you're creating a copy of an annual action plan, you do also always want to make sure that you remove your prior year projects. And John and I will talk about the process of, of removing projects, but I want to use this as a chance to also just very quickly demo that, is, is to remove a prior year project, you would just double click the Remove button, and that just removes it from the copied action plan. It doesn't remove it from all of IDIS, but just the copied action plan. And we'll come back and talk about that a little bit more. Um, but here we are in our AP35 screen. So to create a new project, come down and click on Add a Project. And gosh, my EIS yeah, is being a little funky here. So I'm going to pause here for a second and just come back to the PowerPoint. So my EIS is just being a little bit off. And we'll just talk through here from the, uh, the screen. Um, if you'll click on that Add an Existing Project field, uh, and then select the Create Project, and then you'll fill out all of your corresponding project details. And as we were, were describing, this is where you can put in all of the narrative information uh, related to your your project, and, and John was talking about using that those narrative fields to describe and make sure you're providing enough information, uh, and you can do that in the uh, the AP35 screen from the uh, the edit field. I can just pull that up here. I kind of just re rebooted my IDIS connection here, and you'll see here I can now use that description, enter your project title, uh, the estimated amount, which we were discussing, select your corresponding annual goals, your corresponding priority needs, estimate the number and types of families that will benefit, and fill out all of this content within the AP35 screen. And then again, most importantly, really connecting it with your goal outcome indicators. If you're adding a project, and, and again, John will talk about this in a little bit, but if you're adding a project within from just the projects functionality within IDIS and not creating it within the the Econ Planning Suite within the AP35 screen, you'll need to go back through, you'll need to add that project here and make sure all of that content, all of this corresponding content gets filled out to create that linkage to the caper as, as Beth was describing. And lastly, as you do add, as you create those new projects, those projects are then added within IDIS, within the AP35 screen. Uh, and those projects are then also 
saved in IDIS. So as you go to create an activity during the course of the program year, you can search for, you can identify, you can find that project, and you can link your activities and associate your activities to those projects that are entered in your AP35 screen. The important takeaway there is when you create a project in the AP35 screen, it automatically creates the project in the Projects tab. So with that, John, we'll pause and turn it over to you to talk about setup for, for state grantees. Thanks, Chris. All right. Again, let's talk about some specific uh, things that we need to deal with when we're states. So activity level detail is not required in the state's CDBG grantees annual action plan. Um, projects should align with the state's method of distribution, however. Once the state has made awards to units of local month, Look, units of local governments in accordance with the methods of distribution. You'll then report those awards by setting up the activities in IDIS. So again, the activities come later uh, after these, these projects are set up. So to, to ensure that the econ planning suite can pull the correct CAPER data, the activities must be associated with the appropriate project in the AP35 screen. So specifically, states are encouraged, as Chris said earlier, states are encouraged to set up projects during the action plan development, as this will create the structure to ensure that the data aligns with the goals and so that accurate CAPER can be generated in IDIS. <coughs> However, if projects are not set up in the AP35 screen during the annual action plan development, then states will turn to the second method Chris identified earlier, creating projects and the project submenu in IDIS. For states, it really doesn't matter to us whether you put the projects in at the time you're submitting your action plan because you do that method of distribution process and enter that screen as well, or if you set them up in IDIS first and then pull them into your action plan later. What's really important, regardless of which way you go, is that you make sure that those projects are in your action plan prior to creating a CAPER so that your accomplishment data can align correctly in the CAPER at the end of the year. Thanks, Beth. Good, good input there. Um, so now we're going to turn to the second method of entering projects in IDIS. And so in addition to the state grantees that did not use the AP35 screen to enter projects, this method also applies to any grantee that amended its plan during the program year but not, did not yet enter the projects into the econ planning suite on the uh, AP35 screen. So to do so, the grantee will first add the project directly into IDAS using the Add Projects link on the left side of the Plan Project Activity screen. So this is, again, within you know, the traditional IDIS areas, not uh, going into the, uh, the action plan itself. And then before the end of the program year, the action plan must be amended to add these projects entered in this more direct fashion into the AP35 screen. Then from the AP35 screen, if no projects have been added yet, um, such as what we're showing here, uh, you want to click on the Add Existing Project in the bottom of the screen. If the projects already exist, if some have been set up, uh, then you will click on Add a Project that is below the list of existing projects. And then in this first screen, that's the, the, the number one example, you'll 
come to this um, search project screen. And here you want to enter the appropriate search criteria or click on the search button to display a list of all the projects within your jurisdiction. And once that is done, you'll come to the screen number two uh, and you would locate the project you would like to select to add to your annual action plan. So you're, you're clicking that out and you're simply clicking on the add link on the action column to the right hand side. Then we come to the next screen, number three, and on this edit project screen, you'll complete all the information in the expected resources field, the annual goals supported, the goal outcome indicators for the project and so forth. And then you'll just simply click on save and the project at that point will be added to the project table in the AP35. So once you do that, you've, you have it into the AP35 screen it will be part of your action plan. Um, Chris, I, did we want to do a poll now, I believe? Sure. Pull up poll number, uh, poll number three. Yeah. I'll go ahead and launch it. Okay, again, everybody can see on your screen. We're just asking when setting up your action plan, do you expect to copy the previous year's action plan or create a new one from scratch? So it may be what you've done in the past or but certainly what you plan to do the next time. And, and if you're not sure, you can just simply click on the not sure. I'll close this. Okay. So um, here we see some results. Um, so about 60 or 68 percent of you want to copy the previous year's annual action plan, and 20 percent of you want to create a new one from scratch. So quite a bit of copying. And just a 12% of you are, um, um, just 20% 12 of you are not quite sure at this point what you're going to do. Great. And so as John, as you were bringing that up, there were just a couple of clarifying questions that I'd like to, to address uh, in terms of confirming when you would set up a project in the projects tab in AIS versus in the AP35 screen. Generally, we, we recommend setting up your projects in the AP35 screen because this prevents you from, in the future, having to open up that action plan or create an amendment to that action plan and link projects that were already created just from the projects tab uh, so that they're tied to and connected to the action plan. Uh, however, as Beth noted, for, for state grantees, the, the focus is on the method of distribution at the time of action plan development, and you may not be certain on what your projects are uh, for state grantees, so you may not be setting up within the AP35 screen. Uh, and similarly, if a, a grantee is creating an amendment uh, any grantee is creating an amendment during the program year uh, and is waiting to enter that amendment in IDIS until the end of the program year, you may set up that project within the projects tab and then link it to your action plan uh, at the end of the year when you create your amendment. The, the important piece here, and, and there was another question asking if, if as a result projects were set up twice. And no, you're never setting up a project twice. The important step is just always making sure that you're linking your project to the, uh, to the action plan, and that is done through the AP35. And so you want to 
to make sure that you, you create that connection and tie that together, but you're never required to and never should create the same project in two separate places from the AP35 screen and then set it up again in the projects tab. When you set that up in the AP35 screen, it will automatically copy forward into the, the projects tab in IDIF. So very quickly, and uh, we talked this through a little bit about removing prior to your project. And was able to demo this, but do you want to highlight a few points? If you are copying your action plan, so for the 70% or so of you, uh, it will automatically copy your prior year project into the new plan. Uh, so here in the screenshot, we see we created a 2017 action plan, and it copied it forward. And the important thing to note there is that program year is still oops, on it, highlight it, and click the screen for it. Uh, it is still 2016. You can't update that year uh, to become 2017 or to become your current year. Uh, and so generally, and again, we'll, we'll talk about the exception of, of multi-year funded projects, but generally, you should be removing those prior year projects and creating new projects for the upcoming program year. Uh, and you do that. Uh, by clicking remove, you'll double click, you'll be prompted with a, a, a screen confirming that you would like to remove it. When you remove a project from the action plan, you are not deleting it from IDIS. You are only deleting it from that action plan. And then again, once you remove those projects, you can go through, you can do the add an existing project to, to both create your new projects or if you've already created projects elsewhere from the projects tab, you can bring them in through the add an existing project. John, we'll turn it over to you to, to talk through multi-year funded projects. Okay, great. Thanks, Chris. So uh, let's talk about the special case that we sometimes receive questions about. Uh, setting up projects for it's a grantee, maybe setting aside resources from two or more action plans, um, plan years, to come up with a sufficient budget to fund a large project. So uh, in fact, I think we got a question on this that I saw came in a little bit earlier, so hopefully this will, will cover that. Um, so for CityBG, an example might be uh, th that we're going to look at as a large public facility or public improvement project. Um, so, however, just, just and I guess so this actually relates to another question that came in. Um, this should not be confused with projects that may essentially be repeated in consecutive years, such as funding a public service activity. Uh, so this isn't that uncommon where you might on a, a you know meals on wheels in a few consecutive years um, these are not considered multi-funded multi-year funded ac activities or multi-funded uh, multi-year funded projects and should typically be set up for each action plan year in which they are funded Okay, let's look at a, an example. Um, so in this case, we're gonna look at, at an example that's a planned public facility project uh, that's going to be funded by three separate years. So this is sort of a planned budget of $320,000 $320, and they're taking three years to, to set aside the funds uh, to uh, go forth with this particular project that won't really begin construction until that third year. So we're gonna sort of walk through this scenario here. And we can go to the next slide. Thank you. So you're, in this case, the first year is the 2015 action plan and the grantee will go ahead and set up a project. Uh, so project number 
27 for 2015 is the Oak Park and Rec Center improvements. Uh, year one, there's uh, $150,000 set aside from your year one action plan for this. And so at that point, the grantee sets the project budget at $150,000. And then along comes year two, uh, 2016. And the grantee is going to add, I think, another $120,000 from year two, 2016. And that will bring the total funding for the project up to $270,000. So the grantee would write, would, would, so, so in this case, the grantee is not setting up a brand new, brand new project, but rather adding this 2015 project into its 2016 AP35 screen. And it is increasing the budget from $150,000 to $270,000 simply by overwriting the amount that's there. And that will transfer to the single project that's set up. So now we're moving into the third year, and there's some additional funds, I believe another $50,000 that will be added this year, and the grantee, again, does not set up a brand new activity, brand new project, rather, but instead adds the project from, in the AP35 screen, uh, from the 2015, adds the 2015 project into the 2017 AP35 screen. And again, since there's additional funds they're putting in, it increases the budget from 270000 in year two all the way up to the full amount of $320,000. So this time, the, the activity is really ready, ready to go. So you're ready to start construction, and the grantee goes ahead and adds an activity. Um, and you can add a single one under 2015, uh, in this case, it's activity 789 uh, for Oak Park Rec Center improvement, puts in the address and so forth, and it's now ready to go to activity funding and actual fund the activity. So we go into the activity funding screen, and first it would add uh, the 2015 grant amount. So remember, with grants-based accounting, we're in 2015, we're past that. FIFO type of funding, but we're, we're really into very grant-specific uh, funding. And so they would add 150000 from the 2015 grant. They would go ahead and in that same screen, right below that, they can enter a new year for 2016 grant, adding $120,000 from this grant. And then it could go ahead at that point and add the third year of funding in this case, just $50,000 from the 2017 grant. So that equals $320,000 that is shown under a single activity that's related to the um, same you know, 2015 project, but that 2015 project is linked to three separate action plans, and you're able to track the funds through the activity by delineating the amount of funds that are uh, committed from each grant year. So I'd like to take you in. Let's look at a few highlights from that. Um, so a few takeaways. So again, we're, we can use a single activity, or rather a single project that will include funding from all years. And they will create the project in year one action plan in the AP35 screen. And then in each subsequent year that the uh, project will continue to receive new funding as part of the action plan, they can go ahead and add the same existing year one project in the AP35 screen. Again, do not create a new project. Um, it would be good to reference that the project is funded for multi years in the project description. So again, each project has a project description, and that's a good place to lay out that this will be funded for a total of $320,000 um, across three years of funding, and to provide a little bit of, of information on how you plan to fund it. Each year, you'll simply increase the amount of funding in the project as you add it to your new 
action plan. And again, just, just to note, um, ESG projects, for example, do work differently and funded only with a single year. And John, if I could just add in, for those of you who are looking at CDBG projects, it's real important that we differentiate what's a multi-year funded project versus what is a annual project. Generally, multi-year funded projects tend to be infrastructure or public facility type of projects where you're cobbling the money together over several years. A multi-year funded project is not a public service project that you would be entering into a new grant agreement each year with that service provider for you. That's a separate activity and separate project each year. Thanks, uh, Beth. That's really important point to note. All right, so now along with this multi-year funded project, talk a little bit about the activities again. And in the example we showed, and we'll jump back to that in a moment, um, you know, you may set up a single activity in IDAF for the single project. So there's just one, pro one project and one activity that's going to cover all three years. Uh, you typically don't want to set up the activity until you're about ready to commence. You don't want to get flagged for going 12 months without a draw. and, and, and so we want to avoid that by setting up the activity when you're really ready to begin. Uh, and then you would fund, you would add funding for each grant year as required in activity funding. So that's going to help delineate where the funds are actually coming from. So for CDBG, some grantees like to set up separate activities for each year to, to really break it down a little bit more. And that's okay. Um, but one thing to, to really keep in mind, uh, really two things. One, you'll continue to associate in this example we did with that same 2015 project. So you have that year one project. Um, you can continue to set up activities that delineate, delineate each year with that project. But in order to avoid double counting, you would probably want to go, um, as you set up the CDBG, uh, activity in that first setup detail screen, you're able to click on a radio button next to or, or answer yes to the question, will accomplishments be reported at another activity? And so you would indicate yes there, and then you can identify the other activities within the, the other activity within IDIS that you'll provide the accomplishment reporting and other details. So again, we're, we're avoiding double counting uh, accomplishments by using this method. And just, uh, it's a lot to take in, so just another look at that, that picture here. So uh, again, you'll be able to download these slides um, after the uh, presentation. We'll, we'll make sure we send them out and, and put them up on the, we'll provide a link for these. And um, again, you could see this example really shows the uh, the first uh, point that I was talking about activities where you're doing a single activity, but you could just as well have three separate activities all linked to the same project. Um, and you would be able to there delineate, just like you are here, uh, that activity funding um, for 2015 is 150,000, for 2016 is 120,000, and for 2017 is 50,000. Thanks, John, and, and a number of questions coming in on, on multi-year funded projects, and we will get to those in just a minute. I uh, want to, to first just also talk about prior year funds being reallocated. Uh, as this is a question that comes in quite a bit through the AAQ uh, of what is the process within the econ planning suite for reallocating prior year funds? And if you are, if you have funds that you are reallocating, you would include those reallocated funds on the AP15 expected resources screen uh, under prior year resources for the current or the new year action plan. Uh, and so you'd be using those prior year funds right, as part of your current or new year action plan. You wouldn't necessarily, if they were funds from 
let's say 2014, uh, you would not be going back into your 2014 action plan, uh, but you would be including those in your current year action plan. To break that down a little bit further, when you are reallocating those funds from prior year uh, projects, you would only be amending projects uh, that are required by 24 CFR Part 91505 and your citizen participation plan. So you only need to amend a project uh, if it meets the criteria set in either your citizen participation plan or 24 CFR Part 91505. Uh, again, at the, the beginning of today's session, Beth and I both mentioned that your, your plan is just a plan. So there may be some tweaks or changes that do not warrant an amendment. And if you think about it this way, I'm sorry, Chris, I was talking oh, no. in front of you. If you think about it this way, you're going out for public comment to tell your community, here's what I'm going to fund this year and here's what I'm going to do to reach the goals we set in our consolidated plan. And so if you're using reallocated funds from prior years, this is the time to be able to tell folks, here are the projects I'm going to undertake this year. It doesn't really matter what color the money is. It's you're telling folks, here's what I'm going to do this year. Within IDIS, the color of the money matters, but within the Ecom Plan Suite, you're really telling the uh, public and your citizens, here's my projects that I'm going to do over the next program year. Exactly, they, and, and that's a great point, Beth. The, the community, your council, the stakeholders, they're just excited to learn what you will be doing in the program year. So if you are reallocating funds, those new projects, they would be part of your current year action plan. Um, you would not be uh, needing to make those revisions in a prior year action plan. We, we don't recommend reallocating funds among projects in prior year action plans and opening those back up. Uh, we strongly encourage you to operate just in the current year. So I know we've covered a lot, Ben and John, it looks like we've had a number of questions that have come in. Um, so I think, uh, John, I, do you have some questions uh, ready to go? I do, Chris. Um, we do have one question, uh, do we remove all prior year projects, even if the activities in those projects are still active. So I believe in this case, um, they're referring to when you copy your annual action plan, which also copies the prior year projects. So as Chris discussed, there must, these must be deleted from the new action plan, um, but this does not impact the actual projects from the original action plan being copied, which will still exist. It will uh, also not affect the activities associated with the projects being copied. So the answer is yes, you will want to remove all prior year projects that are copied when you copy an action plan. All right, Chris, here's one I'll Let's uh, look at this one. When setting up the action plan activities, how do you link them to a specific con plan goal? So again, the question is, when setting up the action plan activities, how do you link them to a specific con plan goal? So first, uh, let's make sure we're clear on the use of the word activities. Um, when setting up an action plan, we had projects, not activities. So that was part of our earlier discussion. So just, just being clear, we're talking about projects there. Uh, activities will be set up later to delineate more specific uses of these funds. In either case, both the projects and the associated activities to that project are linked to the comp plan goal while going up the tree, as Chris showed earlier. So projects are linked to the annual action plan goal. 
which in turn is linked to the con plan goal. Okay, um, let me just look at some more. Let's look at this one, Chris. Uh, maybe you want to take a crack at this one. Uh, would a multi-year funded project result in double counting of the accomplishments? Hmm. Great question, John. And a multi-year a multi-year funded project uh, should not result in double counting of the accomplishments. You would still be uh, entering your accomplishment data at the activity level uh, only once. Uh, and John talked about either having a, uh, a single activity uh, or for a CDBG grantee, uh, potentially having uh, multiple activities, but indicating that the accomplishments are only being reported in, in one activity. Uh, and so in your caper, uh, in that example that John was using, and let me click back to that. In, in 2015 and 2016, you won't have any accomplishments to show in those capers. There won't be any outcomes uh, to highlight, uh, but you can use the narrative of the caper to indicate uh, the, the public improvement or the public facility or, or the larger multi-year funded project that you're currently engaging in just to indicate that there will be an accomplishment and that you know, this money will be, you know, be realized in a completed project in one or two or three years from now. Um, but the activity accomplishment data should only be reported once uh, within the, uh, the activity. Okay, Chris, uh, let's do another one here. This one came in when an annual action plan is copied, is the copied project a new, unique project from the copied year, or is it the same project that was created in the prior year? Yeah, it's a great question, and I think this is a, a question that a lot of people have had today. When you copy that annual action plan, it is bringing forward just a copy of that original or of that original project from the prior year. It is not a new project that you can update the funding for. Uh, so, for example, uh, if you fund a certain public service project year after year, uh, when you copy that project forward, if you change the project budget uh, when it copies forward, it will change it for that 2016 project which your activities are associated with. So that's why it is so important to remove those prior year projects as they come up uh, and create new projects year after year. Uh, just as you would in, in IDIS prior to the Econ Planning Suite, you are still creating a, a new project every year for those activities, uh, those types of public service activities. Okay, Chris, um, looks like we have, here's a, well, we have plenty more, but let's look at this one. Um, as an entitlement jurisdiction, if we want to set up a multi-year project, how do we do this in the AP35 screen? Great, that's a great question. And, and again, we'll stick here on the multi-year funded project example screen. You would start by setting up that project, in this case, pro the 2015 uh, project number seven. Uh, and in 2015, you would just set it up with that original grant amount, the, the $150,000. And I would recommend using the narrative, using the planned activity field, to describe that this will be a multi-year funded project and that funding from 2016 and 2017 uh, will be included in the project uh, and that the project will be completed in, in two years or three years or one year down the road. Now, the important thing in, in 2016, 
I was just talking about with a public service activity uh, that is not a multi-year funded project, you would need to create a new project every year. Uh, it is the opposite for a multi-year funded project, you know, such as the public facility or public improvement or infrastructure projects that a uh, that John was describing, um, you, you would search for and add that as an existing project on the AP35 screen. So you still had that 2015 project uh, included in your 2016 and then is uh, your 2017 action plan as well or, or for however many years. John, anything to add on, on multi-year funded projects there? No, I, I think you covered that well. I think one thing that has come in is that is a number of state grantees have asked uh, on the process for, for adding a project during the program year and, and what is that process and why does this, why would a grantee need to do that? And this ties back to the very beginning uh, for, for, we were talking about your CAPER and lining up all of the data from your consolidated plan through your action plan for your CAPER. Bringing in those projects, linking your projects in the AP35 screen, that ties all of the data in IDIS to, your, to the econ planning suite, so to the con plan, to the action plan, and to the caper. So to ensure that reporting is streamlined and that data is carrying forward automatically into your caper, you will want to amend your caper, or excuse me, amend your action plan during the program year uh, and link those existing projects to your action plan and make sure that you associate them with a goal, make sure that you add the appropriate and corresponding goal outcome indicator so all of that data will carry forward. Uh, so I know we have just about a minute left and I do want to share just some resources that we have and Beth, as I'm going forward to that screen, if you have anything else that you would like to share before we highlight some of the resources that we have. I think the takeaway here is really your AP35 screen is the screen that talks and is the bridge between IDIS and your activity and project information in IDIS and the activity and accomplishment data that appears in your CAPER. So if your AP35 screen is not set up correctly, your data doesn't flow between IDIS and your CAPER correctly, it will cause you more work and reconciliation at CAPER time, something none of us want. So it's really important you take a look and get your AP35 screen set up correctly, particularly prior to generating a CAPER. Great. Thank you, Beth. And highlighted on the screen, we have a number of resources. We will send out links to all of these resources, and uh, we will also send out a notice when the PowerPoint deck is posted on the HUD Exchange. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, and if you do have questions that we weren't able to get to, I know there were a number that came in, uh, please submit them to the HUD Ask a Question desk. Thank you all so much, and have a great rest of your day. <laughs>